time Sick where the y'all niggas sound fine From where it's hard and man stressing Even starve or pull a transgression Walls up with the Nina, no dance lesson Pumped heavy on the bench so you can't press me Never had ease, no downtime Sick where the y'all niggas sound fine We never had ease, no downtime Sick where the y'all niggas sound fine I don't know how it's going to unfold exactly. I just know what I lean towards more. Um, but we need to be carried in some type of way. For either way that may go. And I just told you, you know, get some simple things. I didn't say you got to go out and spend thousands of dollars on something. Uh, that may or may not happen. I'm just saying, you know, get you some food, get you some water. Make sure you get enough cash out the bank. If not, you can get all of it. I don't know, but get you some out. Because as the system go down, you're not going to be going there and get no cash and buy things. Because that whole system is going to collapse. It's going to go down. So you need to have you some cash on you. Get you a, a gas can, fill it up with gas. So you'll have gas in case something happens. You'll be able to get from, you know, wherever you're trying to travel to, from to that location. nothing take place on a major level to that extent you, I mean you still can use it it ain't like it's going to go to waste I mean you just got water to drink food to eat put your money back in the bank if you wish to do so however much you took out use the gas put it in your car as you can I'm just saying you need to prepare and be ready for what's coming you know it is very unwise to sit and to see the things that's going on and not do nothing because if something does take place right before election time or right at election time, <clears throat> you ain't got nothing, you're gonna be a sitting duck. You ain't gonna know what's going on, you ain't gonna know what to do. You ain't gonna have nothing in place. So you will be the one you got. A lot of community people ain't gonna have the resources to help you out like that. You know, so you need to be already put something in place to help yourself out. Okay. And I'm going to be straight up honest with you. A lot of you know what's going on and uh, you're looking for a way to get out and run. Hey, look, I'm going to cut it to the straight. You ain't got no time to run. I mean, unless you can go and magically get you a passport, you know, within the next month, get the money and then move. You know, some of you, few of you may have it like that, but the majority of you, you ain't got no time to run to do anything, okay? That means you have to start preparing and you got a month or less to do. Just on a, a minor scale, that's just to prepare, you know, minor, okay? I ain't saying you have to get all afraid to be balled up, but you still need to get prepared. The most high gave us enough sense to see what's going on and to prepare for hard times. <clears throat> so, you need to start doing it now. Like I said, the majority of us can feel that something's going to take place. But just because you cannot pinpoint it straight on, don't mean you should prepare at all. Prepare for any scenario. Prepare for it, okay? So you don't get caught off guard completely and you have something <clears throat> to make it a little easier on yourself because something coming we can feel it most of us know our 400 years is at the end and it's almost time to go yeah you know you got a second answer at least we got reparations but i mean it's going to happen when the most high say I mean, you should keep your eye out. I mean, you see me post things on Facebook, giving you updates, showing you what's happened, you know, happening, uh, uh, what they're saying about our reparations, you know. I'm, I'm keeping y'all informed about what's going on. And you need to be informed. Dude was supposed to be out of here before that hit. To my knowledge of what I read, yes. I mean, before, we're supposed to be out of here before it hits on a full scale. So that means the possibility, maybe 
major possibility that you want to see a lot of things take place. So, I mean, our time is between 2017-2019. Most of you who've been on my page for a while know that I lean more towards sometime in 2017. There's a lot of Israelites that lean towards 2019 and with the leap year 2020. But it's within that time frame. But however, before that happens, you need to be getting ready for the times before that. Okay? Which are going to be uh, some difficult times that uh, you just don't want to be cut off for. A lot of stuff happening. Transgression, walls up with the need of no dancing. 
lesson Pumped heavy on the bench so you can't press them We never had ease, no downtime Fellow American the most diabolical agenda in human history is in the makings. My name is Ken White, and I'm part of a vigilante group of survival scientists and combatants who teamed up to do everything humanly possible to save our fellow countrymen from the coming total destruction of our nation. We have reason to believe this is not something you'll ever find in the media, and more than 95% of all Americans would never suspect this plot could ever exist. And although we are very well aware of the fact that no one can never hope to make any sense of our leader's political decisions, we will do our best to show you all the insane facts that we came across and what the final picture looks like when we put them together. So if you're a bit terrified by the thought of helplessly waiting for the total disintegration of the American way of life, and you feel you are not prepared to face the worst that can happen, I urge you to put everything else aside just for a moment and watch this urgent newscast before it's too late. Security experts and defense analysts warn that what's coming in the next five months or less will put an end to our civilization, throwing the U.S. into a new dark age where blood and fire will rule the streets. No radio stations, no medical services, no trash pickups, no subways, no newspaper delivery, no newspapers at all, no heat, no elevators, no water from the tap, no cell phones, no police cars, no food, no help. It's a real turkey shoot, and we're standing on the wrong side of the rifle. My colleagues and I are ready to fight to the last man to ensure the survival of the American family but there's no way of telling how successful our efforts will be. I can only pray this message reaches you in time, before the bloodshed that will kill more than 281.8 million Americans is set in motion. Just another hectic day in the Capitol. Nothing unusual about this scene, you might say. Not until the first sound of explosion close to the Pentagon, and then two more in strategic points of central subway stations, leaving thousands of people trapped underground. People start panicking and desperately take to their mobile phones to find out what's happening, only to discover all networks are down, a situation reminiscent of the 9-11 attack. Other explosions are detonated on main bridges and city streets. Terrified people flee the scene and leave their cars piled up all over town. Passengers on metro buses are thrown violently out of their seats as the buses bounce hard and shut down. With traffic at a standstill, another explosion detonates near Lafayette Park. Within seconds, the downtown electrical grid within a four-block area is kaput. Nobody has the slightest idea what's going on. Police helicopters flying over the affected areas crash into the crowded streets below as their engine's power circuitry is cut off. TV and radio stations strive to broadcast breaking news of possible terrorist attacks, but with no luck. The city's power lines and satellites are down. People collapse in the street as their pacemakers halt. Old people fall to the ground, deafened by the horrible screeching sounds made by their hearing aids gone haywire. Security alerts jolt the Pentagon as state officials watch powerless the data on the screen disappearing before their very eyes. This is not a test. The emergency alert system has been activated. Please follow local and federal authority in your area. This is not a test. The Emergency Operations Center is buzzing with chaos as the President and his military team try to regain control of the affected sectors. What happened here was a series of coordinated EMP attacks that quickly destroyed Washington's power grid and disabled all communication systems. An EMP or electromagnetic pulse is an electromagnetic discharge that fries all electrical circuits within minutes, even seconds. Most modern day appliances, the gadgets we use daily, and even the US power grid 
all have sensitive circuits built in. Military command and control, as well as most of the high-tech equipment, are all very vulnerable to an EMP. Our enemy's plan is designed to take advantage of the traffic choke points in Washington City and use localized terrorist units to set off small-scale EMP blasts that will disrupt the city power grid and disable all machines operating on electricity. Halting traffic on the bridges and inside the city prevents emergency vehicles from reaching areas where bombs are detonated. The cars on the bridge were fired upon by special rifles that shoot radio frequencies instead of regular bullets. This type of weapon can easily be built for as little as $400 with easy to obtain parts. The operating principle is simple, much like a super soaker water gun. Water in a container, air pressure pumped in to the chamber, combine water and high pressure air in a tube, and out comes a powerful sprinkle. Same goes for a radio frequency device. Inside a tube, you wrap a magnetic field with a copper coil surrounded with capacitors. Charge up the capacitors and add in a good energy source, such as an ignited C4 explosive, and bang! You're firing a stream of highly charged atomic particles towards an electronics based target, like a car's electronics, an iPhone, someone's pacemaker, your national security communication system. You get the point. The only thing is, you can't dry off radio frequencies on the exposed target like you would dry off water splash from a water gun. These objects will simply have to be replaced. And while our military's interception system is reduced to a deaf and dumb condition, a quiet submarine approaches our waters close enough to set off the final blow that sends America back to the Dark Ages. Because all it takes is just one missile with an EMP weapon attached to it to be detonated above the United States and the effects are irreversible. An EMP device strategically detonated at an altitude of 20 miles above land will permanently disintegrate our power grid and plunge America into silence and darkness indefinitely. Clogged streets, no public transport, grocery and convenience stores run out of food and emergency supplies before being completely torn down by hungry, desperate people. Financial systems crash, Wall Street, banks, ATMs, they're all cooked as the American economy drops offline. Hospitals all over the affected areas are scenes of chaos and carnage as backup generators and battery-powered systems slow down and die. Respirators, cardiac monitors, intravenous drip pumps and dialysis machines all stop. Patients die. First by the scores, then by the hundreds, then by the thousands. Hordes of military police are deployed all over the country to maintain some sense of law and order, but they are soon overwhelmed by all the desperate people fighting for their lives. And they realize it's beyond their power to control this world quickly spiraling out of control. None of this is science fiction. It is science fact. Scientists calculated that a single high-altitude burst 200 miles above Kansas could spread an EMP pulse across the entire continental United States. And beyond the major city centers, the damage will be done in countless ways, large and small. A blast over Pittsburgh can rapidly turn to dust. Virtually all agriculture and bulk transportation east of the Mississippi and north of Tennessee. The big farms, dependent on power for everything from milking machines to harvesting combines, will silently shut down, starving our people. The power industry is the foundation of our American civilization. From the massive hydroelectric dams and their generators to the hundreds of thousands of miles of power lines that stretch across the continent. To the local substations, to the transformers that hang on the pole down the street from your house, to the breaker box in your basement. All of this will be rendered useless. The electronics we use today are so much more complex and interdependent that the danger of one failure triggering another is higher than ever. Systems all across the country are often operating beyond capacity.
New power plants are being built farther away from end users, creating miles of exposed transmission lines. Vital electronic systems are remotely managed and thus more at risk. Even without a power grid disaster, the big electrical transformers are made overseas and have a minimum one to three year production backlog. As Dr. William Graham, who chaired the 2008 EMP Commission, pointed out, any recovery of any one of the key infrastructures is dependent upon the recovery of others. The longer the outage, the more problematic and uncertain that the recovery will be. It is possible, he said, for the functional outages to become mutually reinforcing until at some point the degradation of infrastructures could have irreversible effects on the country's ability to support its population. The fact that key components of the United States electrical grid are not even manufactured in America and must be ordered a year in advance from foreign suppliers suggests just how complicated and time-consuming recovery might be, he said. How long will it take to replace blown-out transformers if hundreds or even thousands suddenly are destroyed and need to be replaced? Now back in the days of the Cold War, when we first learned about the physics of it all, our leaders were terrified by the prospect of an EMP attack against our country and they kept trying to figure out reliable ways of protection. But once America won the war with the Soviet Union and tossed them into the dustbin of history, U.S. defense strategists, they relaxed and stopped thinking about the EMP. And they completely ignored what the Russians promised us then. In 1999, at a high-level meeting in Vienna, Vladimir Lukin, the chairman of the Duma's Foreign Affairs Committee, angry with American policy in the Balkans, issued the following threat. If we really wanted to hurt you with no fear of retaliation, we would launch a submarine-launched ballistic missile, and we would detonate a nuclear weapon high above your country and shut down your power grid. They calculated that based on current realities, in the first year after a full-scale EMP attack, about two-thirds of the national population will die from starvation and disease. That's 200 million American bodies that will be left to rot all over the country. We have more and more talk of a potential year-long blackout here in this country. And for those that have missed it, there is this EMP Commission report that goes over the very real threats that are targeting this country in terms of our infrastructure going down. And we also have, this week coming up, a big drill in Wisconsin that I'm going to be covering from the ground, dubbed Dark Sky, which is dealing with this exact same scenario. Now, in terms of this... EMP Commission report, it has warned that even the smallest EMP on our grid could take it down for about a year, if not longer. We've talked about before the certain components that it would take months and months just to get those components into this country. And there's a long list of other things you're going to have to make sure you're prepared for if you want to survive such an event. Now here on this world stage, where all types of event, events uh, can happen and go into motion just for agendas. Anything is possible and anything can go into play. But the so-called EMP Commission report says that this threat is very real. It jeopardizes modern civilization. It would take America back to the little house on the prairie days, but most people these days do not have the survival skills that those people in those days possessed. Now, in some of this new information that uh, has been posted here in the past 24 hours, there is some information here on life without electricity. In this life without electricity, it goes over the most horrific scenarios and how this will break down 
in a couple different ways. The first is social disorder. They're saying that looting is going to break loose. It would require a dusk to dawn type of curfew. And no one would want to be out after then risking their lives, that they're saying. And that people are going to be fleeing powerless homes. That the workforce will be completely morphed into something different to where people are going to be all over the place scavenging for just the basics, including water, food, and shelter. Communications, they say, there will be none. No TV, no radio, no phone service. In terms of transportation, there will be some people that have vehicles that are working, but gas pumps will be inoperable. And after some time, those that do have vehicles that are out there, if they're not securing... The, those vehicles, as they're moving about, people will start to target them. They're saying that there will be no mass transit whatsoever. No train service, airline service, all that will be done. Although you will still see drones flying overhead. Water and food, obviously, is going to be key in this. As they go on to say that stoves and refrigerators will be inoperable, the people will have to melt snow boil water, and cook over open pit fires. Local food supplies will be exhausted. Most stores will close due to the blackout. Now, as I've said before, this will create an underground network. And if you're out outdoors cooking on an open fire with a massive bit of smoke billowing, you're going to be giving away your location. You need to rethink this whole thing, the whole strategy, the whole plan. I hope Everyone out there that follows my channel has some sort of a plan. The report assessing this threat is right here. You can find attached to this. But I want to make it clear that three reports, studies that have been done on an EMP attack in America have been declassified. There are, I think, four, five, six, maybe seven that are not declassified. They're just keeping hidden, holding back. And if your town is it making moves, I want to let it be known that the area of Omro is going to see some activity. This is in Wisconsin. As troops are already on the ground, they've been canvassing this area for the upcoming week, this dark sky exercise that's going to deal with an attack on the infrastructure. This is going to go on for multiple days. They're going to have the FBI, the National Guard, power companies, locals, all coming together, working on this. And you can see right here, employees, they're all going to be coming together for this in all these areas. Energy companies, National Guard, a full-scale training simulation for this long-term mass power outage. And I'm going to be covering this on the ground, uh, front and center, and I look to take in as much information as possible to relay it to you guys. Ask as many questions as possible. See what's going on and check this out. MGE. It's all they state. MGE. I couldn't see what MGE stood for as I was going back through here. But MGE will serve as the host site for the Dark Sky exercise. Now, I found a couple different locations where, where they're going to be mounting up. But they say for the first time they're going to use a cyber range which is a virtual training platform that is created to simulate cyber attacks. So all of this is going to be going down. A massive drill, dark sky. Here this coming week, stay tuned to this channel for information on that. And like I said, I'm going to leave links below. And to stay tuned for more survival tactics period from here on out is I really do deem this to be the number one threat to this country and to all of us. If you can plan to survive this event, you're in pretty good shape.